What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of the Ball to Ball series. As y'all know by now, every episode we sit down with real men and talk about real things, especially around hair loss and manhood. Today I got another special guest out of South Florida, my man Louie. Louie, kick game to the people. Give him a quick introduction, my brother. So how's it going, everybody? My name is Louis Velez. Um, just so y'all know, right there in the mirror over in Puerto Rico. Um, born and raised over in Stanford, Connecticut, so I got that Northern of Blood in me. But we moved down to Florida back in 2001, and I've been here since. A um, little bit about me, what I do for work is keeping the lights on with the utilities company here, Florida Power and Light. And hobbies in the end is linking up with my boys, having a good time going out, traveling, different events, just to get out and explore the world. And of course, you got to love fishing because I love being by the water. <laughs> I haven't left Florida, but hey. <laughs> Yo, Louis, so what's the name? Some of the top places that you've traveled to that you rec recommend that I got to hit top places. You got to go to California. Not so much L.A. because everybody's going to L.A. You got to see some of those different things out there. Mm -hmm. I went ahead and stayed over in San Diego with a girlfriend of mine. And man, amazing city. So much to see. Going out to La Jolla, hitting up the local restaurants that, you know, you only know if someone puts you on. Because If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Um, besides that, I got family over in Connecticut, like I mentioned. Uh, we went over to New York, uh, a couple of places over in Boston, Fire. Okay. Uh, we went out this one time to a place in Rhode Island. I think it was called Mesquamacet Beach. Beaches are different wherever you go. California Beach is amazing. Florida Beach is amazing. I went to Rhode Island. I was impressed. Where? Okay. Out of the movies. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, when you were in San Diego, did you have a chance to hit up uh, Tijuana? Tijuana, we did not. Um, believe it or not, a little fun fact about me, I still don't have my passport. Everybody's oh. still with it, but <laughs> here it'll change. Yeah, you can't, be, you can't be the travel guy without the passport. We got to get that done. Domestic. <laughs> <laughs> There's I, levels and we get into the next one soon. <laughs> no big deal. I love it. No doubt. No doubt. Louis, man, are you a big sports guy by any chance? Not too much, but I always enjoy a good game, whatever's playing and whatever's on. So you are you watching the playoffs right now, NBA playoffs? Not paying too much attention? Not too much right now. Okay. You know, the Miami Heat are there, man. So I don't know if, if you're watching the, the Heat at all, but they're still in the mix. So you got to check them out. Um, I mean, they got, they, got a good, they got a good shot this year. Yeah, we're talking what, game five right now, game four? They just beat the, they just closed the Hawks out. So they'll be starting a new series with either, I think, um, the Raptors or the 76ers in a couple of days. So yeah, it'll be game one soon for them. Not bad, not bad. Yeah, man. Yeah. Bro, next question here. We kind of already got into it a little bit. You grew up in Connecticut, moved down to Florida, but that means you might have a different idea of the concept of home because you kind of moved around a little bit. So the idea with come home, we let it chop it up with guys about what concepts or what memories comes back up when you think about the word home. So when you hear the word home, bro, what do you think about family, friends, what memories come up? Definitely family. Cause home's what you make of it. It's not so much the location, but the people that you grow close with the people that, you know, have always been there for you, no matter what. So wherever you go, Anytime you're with those people that really like bring the bread and butter together, that's what I consider home. Yeah. Because, hey, I always got Connecticut in me. It's in a part of my heart. You know, if you're moving down to Florida, I've been around to maybe three, four different cities, but home is always where the people are at. Home is where the heart is, no doubt, no doubt. And I, I, was, I like to double down on that, bro, because, again, when you come at home, when you're shaving that head, Shaving it and you go on, you go home where you're supposed to be, man. Somewhere where you're comfortable, you know what I'm saying? So again, home is where the heart is in both in both situations, man. You know what I'm talking about? Bro, I see you today, you're killing the ball. We talked about that earlier, you know what I'm saying? You got Dwayne Johnson look over there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, WWE head. Um, but um, take us back a little bit, family, because we know you didn't always have the ball head, even though you're killing it today. Take us back a little bit, bro, whether it's middle school, high school, and let us know what kind of hair you had back then, though. Let me take y'all back. We're talking 10 years ago when I was growing out the curls. Oof, Lord. Um, little fun fact, too. If you ever look at my forehead, right, you got this nice little scar back when I had a tumor back in 2008. So even though I still have my full head of hair and everything, you could still see the scar. Yeah. Right Haters no, go but hate the curls it. were crazy. Oh, absolutely. If I grew it longer, I'll oh, forget about it. <laughs> 
But here's the funny thing, though. A lot of the men in my family are all bald. Pops, he lost his hair, um, I want to say about 36, 38 years old. When I was born, he was 34. So let me tell you, that's stress. Oof. We're going to sip to that. <laughs> all jokes aside, um, on my mom's side of the family, all the uncles are bald, some of the older cousins are bald. And I was always, you know, roasting them like, oh, I got all these curls. Oh, what's up? And they're like, oh, no, don't worry. Your time will come. Your time will come. <laughs> Shit, I didn't think my time would come that quick. But, hey, here we are. Karma is crazy. <laughs> hey, karma came back for me and said, what's up? How you doing? <laughs> oh, man. So so you were coming up. So I, I'll get to this question later, but I want to prompt it right now. Yeah. Because again, like I told you earlier, bro, my dad has a full head of hair to this to this day. So I think that made it a bit harder for me to accept. I'm wondering if because you had already kind of potentially thought you had seen your your your, your father, your uncle was bald. You probably kind of already was like, this might be my fate. Or did you think as, at a young age, never, never that? I was thinking never, but I kind of thought about it. I got my mom's side of the family where all the brothers and whatnot are bald. I got my dad's side of the family where he lost his hair later. So I'm like, okay, looking at my jeans, I might have a shot. Granted, <laughs> my brother, he started losing his hair at 19. So I was like, I'm 20, what's up? I'm 21, what's up? I'm 22, what's up? 23, where's the hairline though? Yeah. Oh man, that's funny though. <laughs> yeah. So for me on my end, it was more of like a genetics thing, but I can still grow my hair out on the sides, on the front, no problem. It was just that receding hairline that kept going back. Part of me was like, oh no, it's because I got surgery. It's like, okay, so what about the other side? <laughs> so so it sounds like you made it through. You made it through college, it sounds like, with solid hairline for the most part, curl still booming. Yeah. Matter of fact. Right before graduation in 2020. So that forehead was brighter than my future. I'll tell you right now. As large as me living life. But hey, that's pretty much where we had it there. Um, the point where I went ahead and decided, hey, come home. Um, it was after college. While I was still, um, you know, right before COVID hit in 2020, I was just finishing up classes, everything transitioned. And my boys are like, yo, when are you going to cut your hair? Yo, shave your head already. Yo, just do it. And I'm like, listen, y'all. Hold on, Louis, hold on. Was it only fellas giving you jokes? Were, were the were women noticing at all? Or were they not really? Nah, mm. the, women, the women were fine with it. But my boys are like, boy, if you don't cut your hair, if you don't get that raise, hey, come here, you got something. You know, just to have all those jokes. But I'm like, yo, listen, when I graduate and I walk the stage, I'll cut it no problem. I graduated, but with COVID, we didn't walk the stage. Matter of fact, I never did. But it wasn't until I had a job loss last February where I was like, you know what? This ain't going to be the only L I take. So I got that razor and I just came home. Wow. And I mean, look at this. Like, look at this. Like, look at this. It's crazy. So, bro, talk to me about that, man. Like, obviously, dealing with the job loss was probably difficult. Did you feel like that opportunity to say like, hey, I'm making a major change now was just like, I, I, I don't want to say heaven sent opportunity because obviously nobody ever wants to lose a job. But did you yeah. feel like, hey, this is really a chance for me to like take on a whole new kind of situation? Is that, is that, was that the feeling of the term? Yeah, it's all about perspective because granted the situation was I moved up to Sarasota for the job. A month later, I was gone. So I'm like, I just got a whole lease for a year. Job's gone. Oh, what am I going to do? Break the lease, come home, this and that. And I was like, you know what? Nah, this is a change. I started somewhere new and we're going to keep it going. What else are we going to bring new? Bringing it home. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And it really changed a lot of things for me because I, I've seen things a lot different now because rather than seeing things in like a negative perspective, still hanging on to things, still seeing things with the glass empty i fill up a cup but that's later but you know it, it was a big perspective change for me i didn't see things for what it could be what i wish it was it's hey these are the situations that are meant this is what's currently happening how am i going to look at it what am i going to do about it am i going to be proactive to all these situations that happen or am i going to react to things because if you react to something there you go you're letting the situation control you rather than 
seeing the cards that you're given and then dealing with them yourself. Wow. So tell me this, take, take me back a little bit, bro, to you're dealing with the hair loss. Before you come home, you're dealing with the hair loss. You're hearing jokes from your boys. How were you feeling about the hair loss internally? We haven't talked about how you were feeling. We know, we knew that you knew, you know, that you had some uncles, your, your brother was already bald, but at the time you started finally losing it. What were those internal thoughts? How many hats can I collect? Because I love my hats, but did I love my hats or did I love my hats, you know, hiding the hairline type of thing? Because even though I had the curls, my hair would grow out straight. Then it would get wet, curly and then it would start getting wavy. Like instead of having like real tight curls, my curls would be like question marks, mm. like nice and open. So when I was growing out the hair, a lot of time, a lot more times than I could count, I'd get the hairs on the corner and kind of like, brush them in to make what would look like a hairline yeah and then it goes in the front to kind of like pat them down push them down so it like looked like i had a full head of hair and everything i did just you know like my patience it was just etching back and etching back <laughs> i got more jokes and i got more hair now so hey we'll take it man we'll take it okay so you you're kind of like you're, you're trying to figure out the hat wave the hat wave to cover it up a little bit um not getting too many jokes from females. So that probably helps. Like, cause my thing was, it was less what my homies thought. They would give me jokes, but I was also, I was always thinking that the women were noticing, right? And that's what I think was keeping me, that was messing up my confidence. It was, cause you know, you know, your fellas, y'all joking each other all the time about different things. That's just life, you know, that's part of the brotherhood. But when you're thinking like, oh, the women are seeing this, that's what kind of was in my head, which had me wearing hats all the time. I remember so many times going to the club, trying to go in, Bouncer being like, oh, no hats in the club. And I'm like, <laughs> I guess I got to go home. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's a struggle, right? <laughs> talk, to, talk to me about some experiences like that, bro. Um, let's see. <sighs> trying to think of some good ones. Um, we might put a pin on that one, but there was a time I had a hat on. The hairline wasn't that bad back then my sophomore year. But I had the hat on for this little homecoming tailgate. Everybody getting lit, you know, we're out in the sun, getting super tan. So the hairline wasn't terrible, but it was like, you know, maybe a little bit back. But I had that nice white tan, and then the rest of my face is all red. We're getting in the club, girl bumps into me, and she's like, no, I go, hey, yeah, you can say excuse me, but if you're trying to dance, let me know. She's just throwing it on me, all that. Um, song's over, lights turn on. She sees that tan line slash hairline. I looked at her. She looked at me. I said, yeah, that's a wrap. I'm going to go home. <laughs> Probably one of the most embarrassing but funny stories that I could think of when it comes to that. Hairline wise, I'd have a lot of like, you know, you'll see a girl looking at you. You're looking at a girl and you can see that like facial expression change mm -hmm. as looking at you. Because, you know, they'll look up, they'll look down, they'll look back up, they see the hair and they go, oh, oh. And that's one of those big things with the confidence boost because it's like, okay, you know, your man, you got the looks, you got, you know, you're looking suave, you're built nice, all that. But then when you start looking at the things that are missing, oh, where's his watch? Where's his chain? Oh, he's got no hair. Ooh, he's losing hair. That kind of gives that like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That superficial like first judgment look that doesn't have to be there because hey you don't look at every book and just start reading it because it looks good you got to look into the contents of it and be like yo this is fire this is a great read hey this is a super dope person despite whatever he's got going on that i don't like or have a second guess on you yeah. got to go out there and do it at the end of the day yeah 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 and i think you know because first impression me so much sometimes and when you're losing the hair, you don't get the opportunity to get any further than that, right? And I always tell guys, like, man, you might as well come home because you're probably looking crazier now with that hole in your head or that five head, six head than you would if you came home, you know what I'm saying? Like, and again, we talked about it earlier, but people can, can feel that lack of confidence, right? You can be the most confident dude in the past, but now when you're trying to hide this hairline, like... People can feel that. Women can see that lack of confidence, right? You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's like, yo, what's up with him? Like, he's been acting different. He's been acting weird, you know? 
hundred percent, hundred percent. So fast forward back, bro. You decide to come home. You know what I'm saying? Um, you, you lost that one job. You're like, hey, I'm about to just change everything right now. Flip the script and step into a new wave. You shave your head that day. You, you did it by yourself, right? No barbershop. You, you just kind of did it. I'm going your- to see if I can find that first picture. because <laughs> We need that. We need that. Also, <laughs> so- I want to I know how you, like, did you look up some, like, YouTube videos to understand how to shave your hair? Like, or you just, you just kind of winged it to figure out how to do it? So a little funny story. I'm a part of um, a fraternal organization. And uh, it's called La Unidad Latina, Lambda Oops, and Lambda Lambda. Oh, you will, man. Know about oh, you will. Come on. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little disclaimer. I'll throw the chapter at real quick. But um, so one of our things that we do, most of our new members, when they join, you know, they cut the hair down. So for us, we cut it down. I joined in spring of 2017. So I had the full on Bali, no problem. The funny thing about it is that my hair never grew back the same. But I still grew my hair out, still made it work, even though the hairline wasn't really there. Yeah. But, you know, that was fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> Let's see. I got to find this picture and show you guys. A funny story, bro. I, I, I'm also a friend. I crossed a cap off a side at Chapel Hill. So, obviously, we had to shave our heads to a probate season. Okay. Um, and I don't want to say my – because my hair definitely grew back. And, I, you know, I didn't – that was – I crossed fall 09. So, okay. uh, you know, I didn't, again, I didn't shave my head. I didn't come on in 2017. Um, yeah. But I definitely know some other homies in um, college who crossed different frats that, like, I had no idea they were losing their hair. They probated, and it never came back the same. And it was just like, damn, bro. <laughs> That's literally me. Oh, man. It, it, God. It's funny because I'm even looking at the picture, and you can tell my confidence is, like, just gone. So I'm like, let's see. Ugh, Jesus. I'm shaking my head looking at this like, who is this guy? Right? Yo! Yo! Granted, I did shave like the this section here because it was still growing but not that much. But I literally went from, actually, side profile. And I had gel in my hair, but who cares? Okay. So it was looking pretty rough, right? You can already see the other half just saying, let go already, right? But then, like, come on. Like, come on. Like, how do you go from that? Right? Oh, but you're really, you're really rock. pulling off the rock. The rock look on the left. Yeah. Literally. And that was what? 11.22, 10.53, half hour later. Mm. So it's just like, it, it's... When you're holding on to something and you're trying to do everything to hold back to what it used to be, there's going to be that point in time where you're literally just like, fuck it. Why am I still holding on? Why am I trying to embody and remember and embrace the past? The past is the past. You got to move forward whether you like it or not. But if you can go ahead and embrace it, like you've seen it in my face right there, just, hey, yo, hold on. Hey, D. Hell yeah. What the hell was I waiting for? My boys were right for the longest and the whole nine yards. So it sounds like immediately you, because you, again, you had already seen yourself ball, but at this point, you yeah. know, 30 minutes later, you look, you look, you giving yourself the look. You're like, oh, I'm still here. And it, again, probably even better than like you were those during that hair loss stage. So you almost like, yo, I'm back almost. Exactly. The only thing back then when I joined was, you know, no beard. So I was like, I got looking like a toe real quick. <laughs> you have that beard going. You got that baldy. Oh, forget about it's different, it. Different, man. It's different now. And I talk to guys all the time. I'm like, yo, the way I'm feeling right now is I feel like, I don't I don't want to say a renaissance, but I feel like there, we're in a time right now where like ball guys are up. Like, I don't know. It's like something's happening right now where we got more juice, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I feel like in the past, people, people weren't embracing it, but I feel like there's more and more guys and more and more women embracing it too. So um, it's been dope. I meet women all the time. They're like, oh my, Kenny, I can't imagine you with hair. Yeah. Like, yeah, you look so good, but I can't even imagine you with hair. And I'm like, it's crazy because I was a bad man when I had hair too, but whatever, we won't talk about that. You know? 
<laughs> but no, no. too, because even with my girl, um, I was even talking about the hair thing and everything. And with that confidence, and uh, I can't see you bald. I spoke about that, and she goes, "I'm gonna be honest with you, like, I can't see it." Because granted, first time she saw me, first time I let my eyes on her, she was looking at me like I look at food. Mm. That's, how, that's how you know. Wow! 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 Yeah. Shout out to her, man. Go to get what you want. Literally, I love to eat, so it's just like, oh shit, like he for real, for real. Hold on. <laughs> uh, no doubt, no doubt, man. So you came home, bro. What is what's the initial reaction from like you know friends, family when they see? It? Also, did you let them know you were gonna shave? Did you shave and just pop out the next day? Yep. So I've gotten finally about time. Hey, yo. Bro, what took you so long? And a lot of, oh, you look good. Mm -hmm. Damn, like so much positivity and so much like embracing the change that there was little to no negativity. Like I can't remember someone going ill because they were saying ill when I had the rough hairline and then they see me now, they're like, they went from ill to, oh. <laughs> them bossed up, you done bossed up. Literally. We love that. We love that, man. Okay. So now, bro, like, tell me, tell me, now that you're home, you're killing it. Tell me what things you noticed about that grooming routine. Like, because obviously, like, you don't just all of a sudden know how to take care of a bald head. Now you got to, that's a, like a, a process in itself, right? So tell me about what that process was like. And if anything surprised you about being bald. So moisturization key. Uh -huh. You can't be walking around with a bald, flaky head head because you're going to keep shaving. You're going to mm -hmm. have dry skin. If you don't take care of your dry skin, you're going to be blood, dandruff, and, you know, all that dead skin. You got to moisturize. Of course, but listen, coconut oil, you're welcome. Talking that talk. Free game right here, people. Free game. Listen, my girl put me on, and I was like, coconut oil? She goes, yeah, try it. I put it on. I ain't never looking back. Okay, okay. But you got the coconut oil. Um, pretty for now, I use a trimmer, and then once I get all the hairs that grow too long, I get a razor. Of course, you got to get that shaving cream, go all over. What I like to do because I like that smooth surface, um, I'll like go down in the direction of my hair, mm -hmm. go back around, and then like go all the way down. Same thing all around. So by the time I finish up, you know, you get the aftershave, you get the coconut oil, rub that all over. And yeah. How often are you shaving, bro? I'm shaving about twice a week. Uh, typically, I would do it every Friday. My girl's like, hey, hair's growing back. <laughs> but pretty much I'll split it to like every three, four days, like, you know, right before the weekend and then sometime in the middle of the week. Yeah, no doubt. So, bro, one thing that surprised me about coming home was I didn't expect to have to shave so often. You know what I'm saying? Like when you see ball guys, obviously you're not thinking about their regimen. Like this guy ain't got no hair. That's all. It's kind of like he ain't got no hair. You're really thinking like how much work it takes. Right. So, what, dude, I came home and I'm like, again, I, I didn't know what to get. But when I like two days later, I'm like, yo, wait, what? I got to shit every two, every three. It's like, yo, this is. So that was my number one frustration point. Yeah. You know, coming home, it's like, yo, the upkeep, the maintenance is way more than you would expect. Yeah, literally. It's like, yo, my hair's growing back. Yikes. Or you get the sides growing back, no problem. I mean, I just shaved like, what was it? I just shaved Tuesday. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Not, Monday night, it's only Thursday evening. Even though, you know, this ain't coming back too much, the sides, they come back like that. Yeah, today's Thursday. So we know your girl tomorrow going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna facetime later she's gonna be like hey uh you're gonna shave now or you're gonna wait till the wedding <laughs> oh man that's crazy bro yeah um that was one of the things i noticed um also let me know if you noticed this i feel like bro when you all right back in the day when we had hair right like you know you could be like walking down the street or something like that Maybe you would be sweating, but you wouldn't know because your hair would like it would like go into your hair. You know, hair your hair would soak it up, bro. That's a bald man. I'm walking just walking down the street and I'm sweating and I'm like, what is going on? But I realized without that hair to soak it up, I call it the casual sweats. You're not even working now. You just doing whatever, walking down the street, and now you're sweating. So that's something else I, I noticed that's kind of annoying. You've been have you had to deal with that too? 
Oh, I sweat as soon as I get outside. It's, <laughs> it's not only hot over here, it's humid, but I'm close enough to the water where it's not too bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, you'll just be doing your thing. Like, it could even be washing dishes and like having a constant straining, like leaning over to wash the dishes. I'm over here, like, <laughs> I'm sweating the AC. Like, I know I'm in Florida now, but is this the Connecticut in me? Like, what the hell's going on here? You know, something's not right. It's a fact, man. It's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Bro, before we get to the back half of the interview, um, yeah. I want to talk about um, what, again, if you've noticed it too, right? And I like, I talk that talk, and sometimes I got to, I put the battery in other guys back to be like, yo, what do you got? What do you feel like right now in terms of like being a ball man? Like, what, what's our status right now, right? And I, and I say this because, there's actually research that says bald men are perceived to be more intelligent, more powerful, more dominant, and more successful than their peers, right? So there's this like perception that when you walk into the room as a bald man, people see that and think that you're just a boss off gate. Yeah. Do I mean, you have you felt? Yeah, talk to me. Talk to me. Yeah, because I was gonna say, look at all your figures that are like, you know, not Hollywood celebrities per se, but look at all these figures that don't have hair but are still making all these moves. Like for instance, you got Vin Diesel, you got The Rock. You've seen The Rock before hair with the turtleneck and the chain, and then you see The Rock now, and you're like, the hell is this guy, you know? <laughs> totally and different dude. Uh, for example, you got Pitbull. He's been bald for the longest, so look at him building a whole empire out there in Miami. You got these crazy big actors. You're talking Jason Statham, you're talking Bruce Willis, and it's like, you know, one, how can you see them with hair? And then two, it's like, they're different. Not only I can remember them because, you know, they're bald per se, but you see the story, you see the impact, you see the legacy that they leave on the screen and off the screen, plus whatever area in their life that they go ahead and touch. Mm-hmm. And when I think about it, bro, it's like, and this is not, this is not a knock to people that have hair because hair is a beautiful thing too. You know what I'm saying? My, you know, I can't, I can't knock the beard or nothing, but when you have hair, you kind of have this extra characteristic that can help define you, right? Like, but when you don't, it's like, it's everything else shines brighter, right? Your personality is a bit bigger. People notice it notice it more. Your, your facial hair may get noticed more. So I think that there's probably something in the fact that like less hair kind of puts more emphasis on everything else. And if everything else is tight, it kind of gives you this kind of like, I don't know, this some status or symbol of this bigger figure. And it looks like many of these men have taken advantage of it. You never mentioned Jeff Bezos, richest man in the world before, you know, Elon Musk, you know, came through. So, um, and also crazy story, Elon Musk asked, actually was losing hair. Obviously he's a billionaire. So I think he went to Turkey, got the surgery, yeah. or whatever. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? He would be one of us too. So, you know, hey, easy 4K. Just imagine how it'd be if he had no hair. <laughs> uh, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. Oh Lord. It'd be bugging out. <laughs> bro, fam, let's get to the back half here, bro. A couple questions, lightning round. Um, it's about four or five questions, then we'll wrap it up, family. Okay. First question here. Plenty of plenty of ball men really don't have an opportunity to switch up their hairstyle. We can't we kind of only got one. So many of us will kind of turn the hats to kind of switch it up a little bit, give it a little bit of variety. Do you have a favorite or go-to type or style of hat? <laughs> You gotta have the dad hat. That hat, plain, simple, goes with everything. I want to say the girls with daddy issues love it, but that's a not a that's not appropriate. <laughs> Just gotta put that out there. But I mean, hey, something plain and simple, a little thing here and there, a little emblem in the center, and just put on with something plain, good to go. You got nothing to worry about. 100% facts. I'm with you on the dad hat, man. I used to be a when I had hair, I would be a snap get snap snapback guy. Maybe yeah. now I'm in. Um, but honestly, I didn't really wear hats at all when I mostly when I had hair because I would again I'd be the barbershop every week getting tightened up. Um, yeah. but now that I am bald, the dad hat definitely stands out. It's my favorite one too. So for sure. Next question, family. We you kind of just threw out a couple of names already, but I want to get you to stamp your top four. Top four most iconic ball men who kind of laid the foundation for me to do what we're doing today. So if you had to name four that were going to Mount Rushmore of ball men, who are those top four? You'd be like, yeah, nah, they him, him, he killed it. Definitely. For sure, Vin Diesel. Love the Fast and Furious series, Inside and Out. The Rock, 
literally his persona and who he is from where he was back then to where he is now crazy like there is nothing to say because we literally see it firsthand like you mentioned too jeff bezos seen way back what then in what is it there was a video in the 90s he had his hair just talking about building up amazon getting super popular and you know the confidence wasn't really there you see him now wow big dog status absolutely big dog d dog <laughs> absolutely but let's see the rock pitbull uh jeff bezos we need number four especially me being a number four when it comes to frat um let's see are you as a four bro yes sir we out oh, here two, man four club what's happening my dog four club. <laughs> four club, hey, that. literally meant to be <laughs> four 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 tail club. Club. hell yeah ah oh, man i'm trying to think of number four outside of frat of course um let's see who comes to mind not just any bald person that comes off the top of the head but you know someone significant mm -hmm. um let me see let's see if i can help you out here uh i got you one got, person in you mind. got Jordan. You got um, who else, man? Um, we already mentioned Jason Statham. John yeah. Travolta is also ball now. Um, who else? Who else? I would have said Steve Jobs, but he didn't let his hair go. He had like just everything around, so it don't count. It's I. It's all ball or nothing. <laughs> Facts. Yeah, nothing. That's a fact. <laughs> uh, Man, we might as well throw yourself up there, man. You're a four. You know what I'm saying? Wrap it up with yourself. Literally, I was going to say, I mean, hey, nobody else comes up. You know, you got your boy right here. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> the list goes on and on. But literally, like I said, Jeff Bezos, he's right there. Vin Diesel's right there. Um, the Rock's right there. Then a whole bunch of other people. Like you said, John Travolta, he's the next one here. I said, bald man. <laughs> All of them that we just mentioned are right there. And when you mentioned The Rock, if you were wrestling, watching wrestling back in the day, you can't mention The Rock without mentioning the st mentioning Stone Cold Steve Austin, who was like a, I mean, my favorite wrestler of all time, like legendary wrestler in the most crazy time of that sport. Yeah. So, for sure, for sure. Bro, five or two questions, man. These two questions get a little bit deeper, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, but these are my, it's my kind of favorite part of the interview. Come home, obviously, is like a colloquial term, slang term we use. You know what I'm saying? You're losing your hair, bro. Just go ahead and come on home. And um, a big part that we like, a big part of doing this podcast is hopefully so guys who are dealing with hair loss can see other men like you. It's like, yo, he went through it. He's doing just fine. You know what I'm saying? So if you know somebody's watching this right now, family, and they're still dealing with hair loss, what's the best advice you could give them? I, what is that? Actions speak louder than words. I can sit here and tell you everything that I can, my experience, but ultimately the decision is yours. You've seen everything from where you had it to where you're at now and things happen for a reason and not everything that you may perceive as bad is bad because there's something on the, there's a bigger picture at the end of the day. So sometimes you don't know the grass is green on, you don't know how green the grass is on the other side till you get there. Just hop in, man. Don't hold on to something that's not the same as it used to be. You can't hold on to the memories of the past thinking that they're going to be the same thing for the future. You just got to come on home. That's a fact. That's a fact. And also, you know, from two men who've already experienced it, man, like the future is bright. The future is bright for the ball man right now. We outside, and that's a fact. We got <laughs> Last question. Oh, man. Man. <laughs> you already know it. You already know it. Last question, my dog. Last question, bro. Um, so the brand come home again. There's the hair loss piece of it, but there's also like a manhood piece of it, right? And yeah. come home is spelled in French for the brand because it means like a man or as a man in English. So for many of us, we grew up really learning what it means to be a man. A lot of times from media, right? And media gives you these messages or these signals of what it means to be a man. But you get older and kind of start to unlearn some of those things. So, bro, I want to ask you, man, from your standpoint, what does it mean personally for you to be a man? To be a man, you got to, you know, you got to grow. You got to stand up for yourself and not only know what's right or wrong, but be that impact, be that person that's going to make a change. Because you're either going to be a leader or a follower, and you're not just going to follow all these different trends because of other people and what they're putting out there. 
to be a man, you got to go ahead and step up to the plate, make what is right or wrong, make it right and be the change that you want to see. So, yeah, being bald. Oh, my gosh, I'm losing hair. Embrace it. Be a man in that sense of take control of it, take charge of it, embrace that and be like, hey, this is where I am. That's not going to change how I feel. It's only going to make me better. It's only going to make me grow. From this, I'll be stronger, smarter, more embraceive, and not letting these small little things affect, you know, as big of a man as I am. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to let the little things just tear you down and wear you down because on a macroscopic level, it's much bigger than that. 100% facts. 100% facts. Talked about leadership there talked about adaptability as well and like I think man leadership you know being authentic staying stay 10 toes and being able to kind of maneuver through change in life is, is a big part of being a man because change is in inevitable right but Absolutely. as I said earlier man you talked about the perspective of how, on how you view change is really the biggest piece of it man so that's super dope that's super dope bro it's been a great episode but if people are watching this right now they want to figure out a way to tap in with you on social media where can they find you Louis? I should have brought the TV out for my handle, boy. <laughs> now, nah, but um, my Instagram is underscore life of Louie. Go ahead and throw that out here right now. We'll probably do like a little handle here on the bottom, something like that. You know it, you know it. But this is me right here. My man. Got my the man. fishing hat and everything. We'll get him to tap in with you for sure. We'll make sure we tap in with you too, bro. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. Also, shout out Eliana before we hang up here, man. Shout out Eliana for connecting us, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, at the end of the day, fours were all out here because all three of us are fours. Oh, I didn't know she was a four. That's crazy. I got to talk hey. to her about that for sure. Hey, if you don't know, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> My man, free game. Yo, thank you so much for joining us, bro. This has been a dope episode, man. Um, any last words to the people watching? Embrace the change. Change is good. You may not see it now, but you will definitely see it later. That has been my experience ever since I went ahead and came home back in February of 2021. My man. Yo, as I say on the, at the end of every single episode, man, y'all stay bold, y'all stay bold, and we'll talk to y'all soon. <laughs> Absolutely. My man. Later, guy.